And good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rafael Casas. Um, I'm actually a Sage Mass 90 and Mass 200 consultant with ISM. And kind of my background with the, uh, just so you kind of know where I'm coming from, I was actually a senior support specialist with Sage for about six years. And I was there for the inception of Sage Mass Intelligence. And uh, essentially, Sage Mass Intelligence came from a smaller company in, in South Africa. And it, as FRX was being phased out within Sage, and, and uh, we were looking for a new product that would integrate well and uh, with Sage, with, with Sage Mass 90, Mass 200. And Sage Mass Intelligence is what essentially Sage had uh, used and is using for their alternative for FRX. What we're going to do today and through this presentation, we're going to be able to be more familiar with Sage Mass Intelligence, how it works, understand the functionality and productivity of, of SMI. It can often be called business intelligence or SMI. Those are some big nicknames that you've heard of Sage Mass Intelligence. Um, again, uh, as Bryce was saying, I'll go through the presentation. And if there's any questions at the end, um, we'll open it up for Q&A, and, and we'll go through it. Now, what is Sage Mass Intelligence? If some of you may not have seen it before or may have taken a gander at it, essentially it's a financial reporting tool that uses an ODBC connection to access data and offers the system administrator and users separate interfaces to manage the report creation process. Um, Sage Mass Intelligence is then integrated with Microsoft Excel, which is used as a powerful and familiar desktop reporting platform. And Excel is a uh, a product that many use and many people are savvy out of. So this, if you're very familiar with it, this is going to be something that will be an option that you may really want to pursue because it really runs off of Excel. Essentially, what if you're seeing on the screenshot or the PowerPoint, you'll see kind of how Sage Mass Intelligence works as far as process and productivity. It starts with the database, which you know, our database um, essentially would be our mass database, our, our GL. Um, then it'll come through a connector, which it has the connection. It defines what the database you're connected to. Uh, the container, which defines what data you have of made available for reporting on, which in, in simplistic terms, it could be just your GL data that we're going to be doing. There are other modules that Sage Mass Intelligence will allow us to pull from the pull data from as well, and I'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit later. Um, but the report component essentially is a data container, the report creation and properties, and then the data output to Microsoft Excel, which is a, a cache. So essentially what it will end up doing is activating the workbook after you generate the report, and then we'll take a look at that in a second as well. The report manager, that report manager is what we'll view in a minute. It's going to allow us to define fields, for instance, define filters. If we're going to generate a financial report for 2012 and a certain budget, which would be original budget, then that's essentially what Report Manager does. Once it flows through there and we select our criteria, then it will bring up our Excel spreadsheet. Now, with Sage Mass Intelligence, there's uh, several pieces to it. Um, there is a connector. The connector is essentially to create and maintain links to your databases, for example, Access Database or any other ODBC compliant databases, as well as it will allow you, for instance, if you want to consolidate companies within Mass, to make a, uh, like you would, for instance, if any of you have used FRX, you can use reporting trees to essentially combine uh, and make consolidated reports for three or four different companies. The, re uh, the report manager, which is essentially the basic portion of Sage Mass Intelligence, that is essentially to create and maintain the SMI reports linked to Excel. Uh, now, one thing that I did want to point out, with the connector, you do have to, uh, to purchase an additional license for that. It doesn't, it doesn't come with the uh, package of the report manager, which that's more or less the um, the basis of SMI. Then you have Report Designer, essentially, what is an additional add-on as well. That uh, is, again needs to be 
purchase just like the connector on top of the report manager. This allows for easier report processing and then creations, just drag and drop report creation abilities. Uh, you don't have to be an Excel expert to build a report. Essentially, it is dragging and dropping certain columns and fields to create the report. You have a, a one-click multi-company consolidation, reporting trees, distribution options, essentially being able to link reports and email reports. Uh, for instance, divisions. I had a client that wanted to be able to email uh, several different employees within the company, for instance, it was 60 different divisions, and, and there's that this offers the ability to do that, to email those uh, simultaneously to, to, to clients. Let me see here, I think I might have something. Let me pull this off, sorry here. <laughs> okay, I will go back into as far as how reports are created in Sage Mass Intelligence. The process of creating reports requires that you have that you use Sage Mass Intelligence Connector to create a, a connection to a data source. Sage Mass Intelligence Report Manager is then used to create a report and link it into an Excel template. The following is going to basically summarize how it works. Um, what I'm going to do actually is we're going to go into Sage Mass Intelligence now kind of take a look at that and how the report's going to run here. Let me see if we can get this to come through. Okay. So Sage Mass Intelligence is within here. This is a report manager. The installation itself, I kind of go through that really quickly here. The installation, it's a client-based product. So you do not, you're not going to be able to install this on a server and run it off of there. It can, it can, issues can, can occur. It's simply in a sense, running off like parallel to a workstation setup. You're going to install these clients. There is going to be a repository folder that is a shared folder on the server. Uh, that shared folder, as we see here, and then that'll hold templates and logs, reporting trees. Uh, and in this case, I created a, a shared folder, Sage Mass Intelligence 4.5. This basically will have the, uh, the information, the DLLs that are necessary as well for the system to run and the add-ins. Um, so, the and again, the installation is very, very simple. Um, the registration as well is, is pretty simple as well. There's not a, a whole lot to it. There's not a, a huge back end. It's really simply running off the containers in the ODBC. Now, within Sage Mass Intelligence, as you see here, uh, Report Manager, you'll have an icon that you uh, can, can basically run reports off of. You'll have, by nature, a, a lot. There's going to be the dashboards, demonstrations, designer, financials, inventory, and purchases. And so, so beyond General Ledger, uh, you'll be able to, as well as create some inventory, uh, run some inventory reports, sales reports. Uh, there may be actually more reports in the works to Sage that will be updated. Uh, right now, there's inventory purchases, purchase order, and uh, or purchases and sales are very limited as far as what comes with the system. Financials essentially is is the uh, the main aspect of Sage Mass Intelligence uh, within the report manager. Running the reports is fairly simple. You have these built-in reports that will, uh, they're essentially locked. You can't modify them. If you ever want to modify a report, you can actually copy these reports. Um, and it'll actually, what's helpful as well is you'll see here, the, to edit this report, you must make a copy of it. So it actually gives you the information and step-by-step -step process. Essentially right-click in the report, select and copy, um, as you would see down here, and then right-click the folder you want to cre create the copy of and paste it in. Um, that unlocks it so you can actually edit it and modify the report. With, let me move this down here, to kind of take a look at how the report will run, you have several ways to run the report. In this case, we'll try the financial reports. As a demonstration, you can right-click, 
and run the report, you can click on highlight it and click Control R, the function Control R for run. Or there's a play button up here where it does the same thing. You can run the report. So we can highlight that and we'll run the report here. Again, these are all with the system. So um, there's something you don't have to really create a lot of them from scratch. Now, this is the portion that I was discussing regarding parameters and, and what you get to choose. So it'll come up with a parameter here. We can choose fiscal year and it'll it's going to always execute and look at the cache and look at our data set with, through the ODBC. So in instance, we'll choose 2012. Then we can choose a budget code for this report. And we'll choose original, because I know we have some data in there. And then when we hit OK, that essentially is going to go through. And it's going to give us the, the properties and the status of this report that's being run. So we can kind of see where it's going and, and what, it, what's, uh, what the process is how it's setting the properties, how it's caching, how it's opening up and activating the workbook. So we can kind of see a process. And at the bottom left-hand side, you exactly you can see as well the launch time and the run time, how long it takes for a report to run. Um, there is a, uh, a process in, in assigning account groups. It doesn't necessarily, at the first time, it's not going to have your account groups already mapped, so you'll have to create a template to generally to put those account groups in there and you only have to do it once and you save that template and link it to your report you only have to do that one time now if we look in the sense we have a map in this specific formula or report I haven't mapped anything so we can uh, we can still take a look at it without having to map any of those in this specific demo now you'll look at here when we run the finance reports, there's several different reports that we can run, income statements, balance sheets, things that are just out of the box. Um, the actual budget variance, quarters, annual budget to date. So we can actually take a look at this first income statement here. And all you have to do is select the income statement button that should allow you to bring it in here. We'll hit OK on that name. And it's, now we see it generating all the data that we have inside of Mass. Um, It'll have the properties, when it's done, of a summarized, consolidated amount, rolled up amount, and then we'll have the uh, essentially the layout where we can drill down into it, which in this case, as everyone can see, you'll see the amounts here the um, of this income statement. You can kind of scroll through, and you'll see the totals. And then if you want to drill down into specifically what this is made up of, there's going to be a plus button on the left-hand side here. We can hit that, select that, drill down to that, and then you'll be able to look down at a deeper level to see what makes those accounts and what is bringing up that specific amount. And this, again, will, will be real-time. That will be real-time information, so coming directly from the activity that's in your mass data. Uh, in this case, this data is coming from your GL underscore detail posting file, which is your real life transactions, and your GL underscore period posting, uh, or actually your uh, period budget detail file, which has all, all of your budget information. Okay, let's take a look back here. Um, Now, within the managing reports in, in Sage Mass Intelligence, this is kind of what we just looked at. We have the ability, as I was saying, to create and linking your reports to our core functions of the report manager. And around these core functions are a number of functions to facilitate managing your reports. Uh, some functions we have the ability to delete reports. You're able to, you're able to delete reports that you may no longer need or just to obsolete. You have the choice of when deleting the report, of deleting the associated template. If there's an associated template with it, you can also remove that. Um, essentially, though, that's only going to be something that you want to do. And if, for instance, other reports are using that template, you don't want to do that. That way it will remove and cause issues for those other reports as well. You can link and unlink templates within Report Manager. Um, this is necessary if you want to link to a different template to the report. 
And you have the ability to lock a report. Essentially, um, you can lock a report. This is kind of a security purpose. You can lock a report to make sure no one makes changes to the structure of the report. You have options to export and import the reports. Um, from Sage Mass Intelligence, these reports can be imported into other Sage Mass Intelligence systems if you're, for instance, moving from one server to another or one workstation to another. You can actually do that. If And the reason why you would end up doing that is because that repository information is held on the server. If you're moving to different servers, you can export the reports out, create a new repository for on the new server for Sage Mass Intelligence and just import those reports. And as I was kind of brought up earlier about re emailing reports, you can actually schedule reports to run as well um, by adding the Sage Mass Intelligence schedule command using a schedule programmer. <laughs> that would uh, that would be something that would be an additional add-on. But essentially, a lot of people will, will use this a scheduler if they're going to email, for instance, that example that I had of 60 different divisions to many different users. So it wouldn't bog down anything at all. They would just schedule that after hours and they would email all those reports. <clears throat> There's some frequently asked questions regarding designer and we'll actually let's see here if we can uh, I'll give you a peek at designer here and what that looks like. Um, let's pull that up here. We'll go into designer here. We'll close out of this financial report. Um, you'll have a financial reports designer. It's going to be the same exact thing, same process of unlocking, locking reports. And these again are all essentially, uh, if, for instance, if you've used just the normal financial reports within Mass 90, you'll notice that the three standard reports, balance sheet, income statement, I think it's a um, uh, cash flows, you would actually have to you couldn't modify those necessarily. You actually have to create new ones. So this is the same type of parallel. You'll have to, again, copy and put it into a new folder that you'd want to. Again, this is going to be the same option of just running it, right-click and running and loading it. And again, we'll put in our, you can either type in or you can look up the parameters. It's going to know either way. And in this designer report, and again, this is a an add-on um, for Sage Mass Intelligence, so it doesn't come with it. But uh, but again, this will make things a little bit easier, and you can can kind of take a look at that. <coughs> Let's see. Let's wait till it pulls up here. Let's see here. Hold on. And then you'll. See, so generally there'll be an add-on, um, a BI tools here, which is part of the add-on. It's in order for you to launch any of those reports. You have the options for reporting trees, quick generate. Um, what you'll end up doing if you want to quick generate something, like for instance a balance sheet or a trial balance, this makes it much easier for you to do it that way. So we'll end up selecting trial balance, and it'll generate the layout for you. You can kind of see how it's being set up. Um, in this fashion, you'll be, again be able to look at it a little bit easier in the report designer. You'll be able to see what makes up those amounts. Um, is it, and you'll have several different options as well. Now when we look at, let's see here, we should be able to, or let me, See here. Well, I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like as far as the analyzing of the tools. I'm just trying to pull it, trying to launch it here really quickly. But essentially, what it's going to look like, you'll have columns and rows, kind of like FRX in here. We can load a layout when we launch Report Designer, um, or we can do a new layout. We can edit, for instance, to trial balance. And essentially, this is what Report Designer is going to look like, the, the functionality of being able to drag and drop specific columns, text columns. Uh, in this case, it's just a, a basic trial balance. So it shows what is going to be on the columns. 
if there's any report filters, any reporting trees. This was spacers, for instance, for as you'll see spacers. So it, when the report is, is laid out, then you'll have some, um, it'll, it'll look essentially pretty. But you can, um, if we look here in groupings, you'll have the groupings of current assets, as you'll see on the left-hand side, non-current assets, equities, the total balance. You can actually drag in specific uh, groupings or activity or information from the preset calculations. So again, this is something that uh, makes it much easier if you're not familiar too much with Excel. This will allow you essentially to drag and drop with these functions already being calculated in, in mass. Uh, these columns here will bring in specific types of budget data or activity that you want to see, company names. So you can pretty much mix and match all that you want as far as how you want it to look like. So this is, poor designer is very, it is uh, somewhat comparable to how you would uh, create a report in FRX, for instance, um, using reporting trees, columns, layout, columns and rows. And that's uh, essentially what it's going to, to look like. And you can create new ones from scratch. Um, but this is a good example of essentially what's going to be pulled into the report and how you see these reports being set up. Let's go back into PowerPoint here. And then when using Designer, we'll, we'll look at does Excel 2003 work with Report Designer. It does not. It only works at this point with Excel 2007 and above. Um, it does support Excel 2010. This is essentially the reason why it doesn't work with 2003 is it because it uses an embedded XML file. The ribbon in Excel as well is an issue. It won't work on that in the VSTL, which are not supported by Excel 2003. So it just wasn't designed to work with that older version. When using Designer to create a report, am I able to send this report to other people to view? <clears throat> this is kind of what we were going, what we were talking about a little bit earlier about viewing and, and re sending them to, to users is yes, you'll be able to view layouts that you have generated if you save the workbook with the generated layout as an Excel workbook. Uh, however, the other user will not be able to generate report layouts if they do not have the report designer license on their workstation. So again, that's going to be something that you would need to keep in mind. You'll have to get a report designer license for additional workstations if they're going to try to generate that as well. Report designer, other questions, uh, frequently asked questions, can you create graphs from the designer reports? And yes, using the standard Excel functionality that links to your layouts, you'll be able to to, to create graphs from uh, from Designer. And how is Designer licensed? The Report Designer module is licensed per site. Uh, all users that have either Report Manager or Report Viewer license will be able to run the Report Designer reports if they have the Report Designer module activated. Now, this is where there's a different a difference with FRX and Report Designer. For instance, in FRX, you could have maybe three user license, but you could install FRX on 20 different machines. It's just a matter of three people being in FRX at the same time. With this, it writes the registries and it actually has your workstation coded, so you're not going to be able to do that. You do essentially have to have a license for each machine that will be using Designer. Um, then how do I install Report Designer? It's automatically installed with the Sage Mass Intelligence if you are licensed for the Report Designer. Um, and do I have to have SMI? Do I have to have SMI to run Designer, or can I purchase it as standalone? You need to have Sage Mass Intelligence in order to have the Designer license. Sage Mass Intelligence Report Manager essentially is the basis of what that is going to run off of. And then, as well as, can I copy Designer reports? We kind of looked at that. Yes, you can. You would be able to, as any other Sage Mass Intelligence report that is out there, simply by creating the copy. Um, and then can you consolidate reports using Designer? You would definitely be able to do that. You would select the cons console, uh, console Finance Reports Designer, which will prompt you to select companies required for consolidation. Also a note that this report delivers a GL account suffix with the company code so that a user can identify which account belongs to which company. So it's, it's intuitive in that fashion that it allows you to be able to see the differences. Now, when we go into... Um, 
we'll take a look here regarding say our SMI for instance uh, in this uh, for the con consolidation report once you have connector license as well because you'll need that to be able to consolidate two databases essentially for instance a mass underscore ABC and a mask underscore XYZ are considered two different databases to consolidate them. And in order to do that, if you were to come in here, you would end up choosing that company um, and then you'll have several other companies down here that you would choose to consolidate and then be in this specific uh, field so that you can actually run the report. And it's essentially it's as simple as that. You're not going to be able to you're not going to have to really create a, uh, a lot of different uh, database connectors or anything like that at all. The system will do that for you. Also, something that is um, that you'll have to do is, you, for instance, when this first came out, a lot of people didn't realize that you actually have to log into the other company, the secondary, third company, or fourth company, whatever you're going to use through Sage Mass Intelligence when you initially sign in. That way the system knows and it's recognizing the database. Otherwise, you won't get that option. You won't see the other companies in here. You actually have to log into it at least once. And that's essentially uh, the end of the presentation, just hopefully helping you, assist you in becoming a little bit more familiar, seeing how it works in the process and the installation and the uh, functionality and productivity of it. Um, I won't go, go into questions, but I, there are a few courses that are extremely helpful in learning Sage Mass Intelligence. Um, there's, and all will be, I think I don't know if Bryce will be able to send these out. This PowerPoint, I could send this out, but there's the uh, Sage Mass Intelligence Essentials course, Sage Mass Intelligence Installation course, and the Mass Intelligence Jumpstart course. So these are essentially the the three courses that would assist you in really getting to get past that learning curve and, and using this product. So at this point, I think, Bryce, we can open it up for questions, if anyone has questions. It says, uh, my understanding is that SMI can pull from all modules, not just GL. Is that correct? No, uh, it's not, not all modules. What it can pull from um, is when you look in here, it said, at this point, it's only pulling specific inventory purchases and sales modules. So. Um, it doesn't pull from every single module, um, but those are the only modules that it's pulling from now, eventually down the line. Sage, uh, I think they're working on that, but uh, but it's for now, at, at this moment in time, those are the only modules that GL, besides GL, that it pulls from. The report manager is included for the two add-ons that essentially would need to be purchased for consolidation purposes is the connector and the report designer. Those are two that it does not come with. Um, those essential report, again, the report manager, what we're looking at, the basics is what it comes with. The designer is going is the, the process of being able to drag and drop and create columns and rows without having to use essentially um, creating them in Excel. It allows you to do that which makes reporting much easier and creating them a lot easier. How many companies or users have installed and used this report writer? Uh, I don't know the exact number. The, um, there, there's quite a few. I mean, um, it, it's it, out of the other alternatives that I've seen. It's one of the more. It's the more simple, out of the box ones. The back end. There's not a huge. There's not a, um, a really a big back end on it. It's, it's really client base to the the epitome of a client based product. It's really run straight off of Excel as you see. I I don't know the actual numbers of who's using it or, or whatnot. Uh, I couldn't give you that um, educated answer on that. But I know there's quite a few since I when I initially came into it, I know there's quite a few. There is a bit of a learning curve but but a report designer itself helps with that if anything. And as I see here, Marilyn had a question regarding is ISM going to offer the ability to convert current FRX reports to Sage Mass Intelligence? That is a, a good, good, great question because I was uh, forgot to bring that up. There is an actual converter. I was part of the beta process um, with Sage for that. 
there is a conversion process, a utility that we have to bring over FRX reports into into Sage Math Intelligence. So yeah, there is a uh, Sage actually created a conversion utility for us to be able to do that. Essentially, what it'll happen is this conversion utility will allow us to bring over the um, the FRX RPTS.F32 file, which holds all the reports and the spec. It's essentially the spec set, and convert that into and into its best ability to convert that into um, into the Sage Mouse Intelligence reports, and it'll bring its own um, converted FRX reports folder. Um, as you see on my screen, it'll it'll bring it over there for you. Um, but yeah, there is a process that. Uh, it's it's a simple process. It's not very difficult, but uh, but yeah, there is a process to convert those reports. And then we have another question from Faith. When it pulls the account numbers, does it also pull sub accounts attached to the main account? When we use the forty account numbers, or account number as well. Yes, um, that actually does. It does have the ability to pull that to pull from divisions. Uh, when I was speaking about divisions earlier, it's essentially a sub account. So it does have the ability to pull sub accounts um, and as well as consolidate them and roll them up for you as well. So it does have that ability. Um, some of that ability that can be done within Excel itself using uh, formulas and functions uh, as far as rolling up. As you saw in the report designer though, that does have the option, the ability to do the calculation and roll it up for you. And you can not necessarily, I guess, drill down, but it, um, expand that specific column, for instance, if it was uh, current assets, to see what that current assets is created by. But yes, you can you can create that by creating filters and parameters to essentially run those reports by, by sub-accounts. And see, Thomas had, and how can we modify the accounts associated with the row and column button? Um, that would have that would actually have to be done through designer to to modify the accounts. Um, that the best way to do that, the, really the only way to do that, is you would have to use designer to drag and drop and and then and essentially move those around to be associated with different columns and rows. Um, let's see here. Now. Um, the conversion utility is, is free um, with the the option of the detailed distribution process. I can actually send kind of an email as well if you'd like of how, how it works. But essentially what you would end up doing is you can run a scheduler. There's an option to run scheduler within here. You to be able to and again that would have you have to have the connector license and to be able to do that and the designer license to be able to schedule that specifically to run um, those the reports via email and send those reports out. You have there's a, a scheduler script that you would need to run as well, um, and then that would be a little bit more in depth. Um, that I can, if you want, I can kind of help you out and show you that, uh, or send directions for you online of kind of how that will work. But essentially, that's really the the, the high level process of how it would work. Um, now, with Sage Mass Intelligence, you'll be able to run that with 4.4 four and 4.5. And um, the one that I'm running here, obviously, is with 4.5. It's connected directly with version 4.5. Um, there are versions beyond before that that, that people will use it for, but it's, it, it's, it's not supported. It, it technically could work because it's just pulling off the GL tables and the, the, the 4x tables. Are essentially the same in GL, but uh, but it's not supported for any other version beyond uh, you know four 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 five, and and that's what you would want to use it as use it with. Um, and as far as Laura, your question: What is the estimated learning time to be functional with SMI? Um, I think within a, within a good day after the installation, um, with a good a good day of going through, especially with Report Designer, it makes it much easier. Um, but it's not very difficult. Within a day, a few hours of training, going through the process of linking uh, templates and creating reports, uh, uh, within a good day, I, I feel you would get a decent grasp of it and be able to run reports and and uh, and 
essentially um, be confident enough to run run these reports. Okay, great. Uh, now I do see one other question down in the chat box, Raphael, from Thomas. Uh, do you have a target company that this, this SMI writer is designed for? Um, we uh, don't. I don't necessarily have any type of target company. I mean, we're going to work best for anyone that essentially that was that that is was using, for instance, FRX that is much more confident or savvy within using Excel. If you're really into and confident using Excel and being able to modify and create functions and formulas, um, concatenating, this would be a good option for you. And it's uh, um, and if it's something that's maybe a may, uh, smaller amount of users would be good. I mean, it's a really again client-based system, so you would uh, you would not want to, you wouldn't be able to necessarily install this on the server and and then have people run it off of there. You would just, it runs like a workstation setup. You install Sage Mass Intelligence on each individual client. But that don't, there is not necessarily any target base for this. You would, uh, anyone essentially that was using FRX could use this as well. But there really isn't a, a target base that we have. But there are, again, there are other options as well. Um, another one, another one would be essentially using BizNet, which, like, as I said, was a, Essentially, Sage Mass Intelligence on steroids, and and uh, it's run, that runs off a SQL database, SQL backend. So that's it's another option that I would highly take, a, highly recommend you taking a look at as well. Uh, does Report Designer allow you to build varied reports within AR and AP, or are we limited to the provided reports? Uh, we are limited. Unfortunately, we are limited to the provided reports um, within Sage Mass Intelligence. I don't know any target dates of uh, when it would be able to do that down the line, but essentially at this point, these are the, all that we've had um, from the get-go when intelligence became available 